If you have ever tried to create a split screen video in Final Cut Pro, you'll know that it can be pretty difficult to do, especially if you need to customize it, add borders, or even animate the separate videos in and out of the frame, but not anymore. In this video, I'm going to show you how Splits 2 from Brett FX works and how you can use it in Final Cut Pro to create incredible split screen videos. This is honestly the best split screen plugin out there, mainly because of how many features it has and how customizable it is. Stick around because later I'll show you how you can win the plugin for yourself. You might want to create split screen videos for music videos where there are multiple performers, creating or recreating video calls, or even just to create dynamic content in your videos or for your clients. Splits 2 can do all of this and so much more. Once you've installed the plugin, you have a bunch of great presets here in your effects browser, including a Splits Grid customizer, which is super powerful. And you even have some vertical layout presets for vertical videos. Using this example, let's go over the controls and the parameters that you can customize. The first thing I'll do is head over to the effects browser and I'll add one of these presets to a clip. I'll scroll down here and let's just take a simple two by two effect. I'll drop that onto the clip. And then when this loads up, you have a bunch of different controls here that you can go through and change. When you have a lot of parameters like this in your inspector, what I like to do is double click on the top of the inspector window here just to maximize that window. And then we can go ahead and adjust these parameters. I'll hide the effect browser and let's start with the layout. By adjusting the position preset, you can choose in which corner this video clip will be. You have positions one, two, three, and four. You can also add a gap, which essentially just makes a little bit of a gap between the clips. So if you applied this to four clips and put them on top of each other, you would have this black bar or this gap between all four clips. You can also offset the position if you wanted the clips to overlap or be slightly off the screen. So for now, I'm just going to reset that. Next, we have the animation section. And you can basically choose how this clip animates in or out. So if I go to animate in and I select overshoot and animate out, we can, let's say, slide down. If I play that back, the clip zooms in and then it drops out. You can also go and change the in and out speed all the way to 100 is basically instantaneous and you can slow it down. So if we wanted the zoom to be quite slow, we can set it to something like that. And if we wanted the slide down to be really quick, we can make it almost instantaneous. And this is what that would look like. So you can play with these parameters and you can even adjust things like the in and out rotation. So when it comes in, it rotates in like this and it rotates out. Next, you have the shape section and here you can adjust the shape of the corners. So let's say we set the roundness to something like that. We can have nice round edges. You can also scale the clip up if you need to. You can rotate it. You can change the aspect ratio of the shape. So you can really do a lot to customize it. You can even change the shear angle, which will adjust the clip like that. So there's quite a lot you can do to customize the way that these split screens look. The next section is the border, and that's quite cool because you can set an inner border. You can change the color to sort of anything you want. You can adjust the width, or if you go and change this from inner border to offset outline, then you can actually change whether this borders on the inside of the clip, on the outside to create a little bit of a gap. So that's really nice for customizing this clip. The next section is the source, and that affects the video clip that you've applied this effect to. You can adjust the position, you can adjust the size if you want to scale in, the rotation, anything like that. And it's quite handy because you can use the on-screen controls to adjust the position, the scale, and the rotation. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. You can also apply a tint if you want to, create a nice cool look there, or you can go ahead and make it really orangey, whatever you like, you can apply a nice little tint to the footage as well. Then the pan and zoom effects will basically affect how this clip reacts over time. We obviously have it animating in and we have it animating out. So if I go towards the end of the clip here and I adjust things like the zoom, maybe pan it a little bit and we'll tilt it down and rotate the clip slightly. Now over time, what will happen is this clip will move 
once it animates in to those parameters. So that's a really powerful tool to create dynamic split screens and to create movement within the panels of your split screen. Scrolling down here, we also have the option to add text. You can also choose if your pan and zoom effects affect the text as well. And you can change the text in animation. Let's just say, let's go for scale up by character and text out, we will fade it out. You can also delay the in animation and bring the out animation in earlier. And I'm just going to change my text to volcano, change the color maybe to the same sort of orange. And I'm going to just offset the position of this text, maybe to somewhere at the bottom like that. Now quickly play that back. Another thing you can do, or the next section at least, is the background. So if you decide you want to turn the source off, you can go ahead and change the background color to anything you like. You can change it to a drop zone if you'd like to drop an image or a clip in there. And then you've got your pan scale, rotation and size parameters to adjust that drop zone. So that gives you an idea of how powerful this plugin is and how many different parameters you can control and customize. So the limit to what you can create using Splits 2 is only hindered by your imagination. Let me show you a real world example of how to use these effects and I'll show you how quick and easy it is to animate. We're going to use these clips of a band playing some music and we're going to animate these clips in and animate them out and have this as the final reveal shot. Let's go ahead and choose a preset to use. I'm probably going to, I've got one, two, three, four, five shots and in the reveal I'll use one of these five screens. Let's go for the diamond. And what I'll do is I'll drop it onto the singer. And what I'm going to do is drag her to the beginning, just so that I've got her at the front of my sequence of shots. And in terms of the layout, I want to put her in the middle. So I'm going to put her in the diamond. The first thing I want to do is just scale this clip up to fill that frame. And I'm going to move it so that she's in the center like that. I want her to animate in and I'm going to use overshoot for that. And I want it to be a little slower than this. So let's maybe set that to about 30. I'm not going to use any rotation or anything like that but I am going to change the border color. So I'll color pick something from her dress, maybe this sort of red orange color over here, and I'll make it a little bit brighter. Something like that should do. And I'm going to adjust the width. Let's have a look at what that looks like. I think that looks really cool. There's nothing else I want to do except to choose the animate out option. So for this, I'm just going to choose zoom. So when we get to the end of this clip, It'll just zoom out. Now what I'd like to do is apply this effect to the other clips, especially since I've already picked my border color and set the speed of my animation. So I'm going to hit Command C on this clip, select all these other clips except for my final shot and hit Command Shift V to paste. I'll paste that effect. And now I can go ahead and drag and drop these clips on top of each other. If you're doing this for a lot of clips, this could actually get messy. So one thing you can do is change your clip height here. You can make it really small and then you can see tons of layers. Then let's go to my first clip here. I'll select these clips and hit V to hide them. I'll click on the guitarist and I'll set the position to one. With the effect selected, I can go and use these on-screen controls. Just scale this down to somewhere around there. I'll select the next clip, hit V, change the layout to number two. Select the plugin and scale this down somewhere around there. We actually don't really see this guy's face. So what I'm going to do is hit T, bring this clip along a little bit, just slide it so that we see his face. I'll select the next clip. I'll set the position to three. Select the plugin, scale it down again. And there we have our drummer. I'll select the last clip, hit V again and I'll set the position to four. I'll go ahead and adjust these parameters again just to make sure that he fits the frame. Something like that should do it. And then one last change I'd like to make, I'll go back to the singer and I'm just going to change this border to white just so that it looks a little bit different. I'm still going to make a few more tweaks, but if we play that back, this is what it looks like at the moment. So I like the way it zooms out here at the end. 
What I will probably do though is just change the way that these animate in. So I'll select the guitarist first and I want him to animate in by sliding to the right. I'll select the saxophonist and I'll animate him in by sliding down. Oops, down. I'll select the drummer. I'll have him animate in by sliding up. And then I'll select the pianist and I'll have him animate in by sliding to the left. I'll play that back quickly. That's a pretty cool effect, but I do want to offset the way that these come in. I'll hit the up arrow to go to the beginning of my clip and I'll move forward a few frames. I can see that the guitarist comes in a little bit later already. The rest all come in at the same time. So I'll just select the saxophonist and I'll drag that clip, let's say about 12 frames forward. I'll grab the drummer and I'll drag that about a second forward. And then I'll grab the pianist and I'll make that a second and 12 frames just to offset that in animation. I'll scroll forward to kind of where they start moving out of frame. Let's use the arrow keys to be more precise. That's the point where they still cover the entire screen. So I'm going to select this bottom clip and make a marker using the shortcut M. And then I'm going to lift this from the primary storyline using the shortcut Command Alt and the up arrow. Then I'm going to bring this last clip in underneath right to that marker so that when this animates out, that clip is sitting underneath. Now that I've gone a bit forward, I can see that these clips don't quite fill the frame. It's going to happen quite quickly, so I can leave it like that if I want, but I'm a perfectionist. I would probably go ahead and just scale this up to try and fill that. Something like that should do. Scale up the drummer. There we go. I'll go ahead and play that back, and this is the final split screen effect that we've created here today. You can obviously go in further and add pan and zoom effects, text, all those things to really make this your own. But that's the beauty of this plugin. You can customize it as much or as little as you want. Let's also talk about the Splits Grid Customizer, which has all of the same controls we've just spoken about, but you're going to be able to choose the number of rows and columns that you want to have. Simply drop the Splits Grid Customizer onto your clip, and then you have a couple of options here. You can choose the number of rows and columns, Let's say I wanted this to be an 8 by 8 grid. I can also click on this grid view opacity so that I can see what my grid would look like if I were to add this many clips. And then you can use the column position and row position to choose exactly where that part of the split screen will be. You have the same other parameters like gap, the position offset, animation, shape, border and all the rest. So this is a really powerful way to create custom and unique grids. Splits 2 also has four vertical presets that you can use to create vertical videos. I've applied them to these four clips here, and you can create simple split screen videos for clips like this. As you can see, Splits 2 from Brett Effects is a super powerful set of effects that will help you to create incredible split screen videos with ease, and it's also super affordable. I'll leave a link in the description down below if you'd like to go ahead and buy it. The best part is that you stand a chance to win Splits 2 for yourself. All the details on how to enter are also linked down below in the description, and there are a few ways to enter, so the more steps you follow, the better your chances are of winning. The giveaway will be open for two weeks, and there'll be three winners, so make sure you go ahead and enter. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so that you get notified of future tutorials and of future giveaways, and I'll catch you in the next one.